always learning and growing. Attracting the right people and keeping your vision in focus focus every day. This is The Brian Covey Show. Hey, what's happening, guys? Welcome back to another edition of The Brian Covey Show. So today, I am super excited because not only last week did I get to attend an incredible conference that was surrounded by successful people, entrepreneurs, people that are trying to do big things in the world, like we all are. I got to make a new connection and a new friend. So today you guys are going to meet Jay. And if you've ever wondered, how do you get your message out? How do you market yourself? Why why does your personal brand even matter today? And where should you be investing to make sure that you're getting the right kind of attention and building it? Jay is going to help you do that. So very quickly, you can read his bio, but I'll tell you guys, with over a million followers on Instagram, the guy was a success over the last 15 years, actually building out YouTube audiences and helping people that you will probably know really clarify their message and get their personal brand in front of the right people. And he's not only done it himself, but he's done it for other people. And we're going to teach you some of those kind of tips and tricks. What are the best practices today? What what are the things that you need to know that are there? And I love Jay has spoken in multiple countries. You're going to love his accent. I will tell you right out of the gate, (laughs) easy to listen to, easy to share. And um, good looking guy that likes to uh, bring the energy and the hype. So buckle up. Today is going to be a great one that you're going to want a pen and paper and to take some notes. So without further ado, welcome, Jay. Yeah, well, listen, buckle up. Let's roll. Buckle up. I like that. I haven't had the buckle up move. Buckle up, put double seat belts on, have the airbags on because I'm going to hit you hard today with some moves that you need to be told to your face. Because I feel like, Brian, so much in the world at the moment, there's so many conflicting messages, right? Do this, don't do this, post 65 times on Facebook a day, only use LinkedIn. Don't do marketing, focus on manifestation, right? Like it's becoming becoming so noisy. So today, I just wanna set my intention on this show and everybody's listening on LinkedIn Live, make sure you put a comment below as well. We're very, this is real, this is live. It's not webinar scripted. Right, we'll notice that you're going to come through. But I really want to set my intention that today I want to give you some tactics that you can leverage from today. Yeah. I don't want you to feel enthusiastic and energized. That's one element. But there's nothing worse than going or listening to a speaker, Brian, and you feel really great. Then what happens two days after? You're in the same position as you were before, right? Yeah. I don't want that. So I want to be able to help you and give you actually a plan of attack and make it understanding for you as well, right? What we learn in sales, a confused mind isn't a sold mind. So if you're confused, you ain't gonna do anything. Yeah. So I wanna make sure I go, hey, this is what's happening in the, in the marketplace. This is how you implement these things. Even if you're shy, even if you're an introvert, even if you don't have an Australian accent, here's what you need to do today so you can get wins from today and it doesn't cost you any money. So all I ask from everyone is just, hey, be open for new information because, Brian, a lot of times I speak to businesses and personal brands who've been in the game who are double my age, who are in their 60s, and they've been told, they've been led to believe that this way has been the way. Now, I come in with a fresh set of energy and skills, and I get them results like that Yeah, because they're open to change. So that's all I'm going to say today. That's my intention. Yeah, I love it. And haven't you found like in your life, like when we are open to that change, we're, we're open to listen and receive a message that that's when change happens. And, and I'll point out one thing you shared last week that I'd love for you to touch on because people, I think a lot of times we self label, we, we self categorize ourselves. We put what many people call limiting beliefs on ourselves. And you shared something last week that was pretty powerful. It stuck with me. I've actually reshared it by the way. That's how I know Ooh. it's good. Right. And you asked someone in the audience last week, you said, Hey, are you an introvert or an extrovert? And without stealing your thunder, they, they responded and said they were an introvert. And you asked, why? Can you elaborate on like some of that and how that starts to play into who we are and how we show up? Yeah, yeah. So basically, to give context, I spoke at Coach Burt's event last week, ladies and gentlemen. It was just a full, I was there for one day, but it was a three-day event. And we just, it was around great winners. And when I work with clients, after they know that I can help them and after they're part of the enrollment, I want to bring up all the fears. I want to bring up all the blocks. And the first block I bring up is, okay, hey, raise your hand if if I'm in the audience or if I'm speaking to you. Are you, most people, or I would say, are you, tell me if you feel shy or if you feel like you're an introvert. Raise it high. And a lot of people go, I'm an introvert. And I look at them, like I'm looking to you now. 
And I say to them, who said that? Who told you that? And the pin drops and they go, I told myself that. Yeah. And I go, exactly. And while, yes, we want the tactics, the first thing it starts with is the mindset. If you come into a situation going, I'm an introvert, I'm shy, I'm not that guy, that's not me, I'm this, of course you're not going to make it if you're telling yourself that. Yeah. And especially now with personal branding and creating videos and putting yourself out there, right? You need to be able to tell yourself, hey, you know what? I'm not going to label myself to a box that I've been told that I've been telling myself. So it's really important that everyone's listening today. Like, shy, okay, great. You, you said you're shy. You said you're an introvert. What else are you going to say to yourself? Mm. I'm not good. Okay. So why do you think you're in the same position as you are now? So maybe we should change our wording a little bit and go, okay. Well, how about I create some videos and don't put limitations on who I am? Dude, I tell you what, that was powerful. Well, let's, 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 let's end that there. Let's end that there. Good night, everyone. <laughs> Drop it. If, if yeah, you had yeah. been in the room, right? That's what I love about these conversations. If you've been in the room, right. you're watching people and I'm watching, I'm always an observer. I'm very curious about when you ask that question, I'm watching the room because I'm wondering, like, these are successful people. They've paid money to be in a room around people that they want to learn. And yet they right. still consider themselves introverted. Well, the fact that they showed up alone has set them apart. Right? Yeah. Like and it's, the fact yeah. And it's sometimes, up. right. And then sometimes, you know, this is why I like these hard questions, but they're not hard to hurt. They're hard to improve because no one's ever said to them before. Who said that to you? Mm -hmm. And they actually go, oh my gosh. I had this one lady I work with in Minneapolis and she's been telling herself the whole, her whole life that she's shy and an introvert. Hmm. And the moment I said that, it's like someone just sort of cracked the egg, like cracked the shell and her whole energy just, it was like, it was like my, I was like, I had a Tony Robbins moment wherever I said something cracked. It's like no one's ever given her the ability or permission to yeah. speak up, to share her story. Hey, you've got a story and a message to share. How dare you tell yourself that you don't deserve to do that? Who are you? You know? You yeah. So it's, it's important that we frame that up. I love that. And, and so for those that don't know you, some of your backstory, without going into too much detail, I thought it was fascinating because right. you were sharing with us and you're talking about being a magician, right? So most of us, yeah. I used to love to go, like, I remember a couple of events I went to and, and these magicians, they, they perform these just magic tricks, right? And you're going, right. how did they do this? How did they do that? And for you, I would love to know for people that most of us, we, we don't have the skills, probably could learn them. Um, right. But what, what did you learn from that experience that you've pulled in now to what you're doing? And any correlation for those of us that, look, we're in sales or we are, you know, in some type of customer facing right. environment. What, what are some of those right. lessons you pulled? Yeah, well, I was in, you know, the just, you know, to, to, to give you the backstory, I was a magician for 15 years. You name it, I hit the success of whatever you want. I had it. I got offered a Vegas show. I got a TV show, 57 million views on YouTube. The biggest magicians in the world knew who I was. I knew who they were. So I hit the, the, the success in my, in my world, but it wasn't enough for me. That's why I transitioned into speaking and transitioned into helping people achieve their dreams. That's my why. Like, what do you want to do? Where do you want to go? How do we get you there? And here are the skills that I know how to do that. So to tie that together to the question you asked, I'm in the business of people. So once I understood how people think, how people act, which is it's a lot about speaking and selling, how to move people, how to persuade people, how to really convince people, to, and really how to get people to believe in themselves mm -hmm. to do more. That's what gave me the ability when I was a magician because I was also in multiple countries around the world, 30 countries. So I realized the only thing between you, Brian, and a guy from China, it's not a male or female thing. It's a language thing. It's words, like language. But the, don't they say 85% is body language anyway? So really, we're all connected. So I really understood how to, how to engage people, how to connect with people, and how to get people to listen. Like, I was paid to do that. Me, little Jay, 19 years old in Singapore, on stage with 50-year-old bankers, 500 of them. I'm getting paid a lot of money to capture their attention. So I leverage that and the ability to connect with people to transition into what I'm doing today. I love that. And, and I think 
this is what I would share with anyone that's, that's listening to the show is we talk about this quite often is, is many times we'll limit or diminish our experience, whatever it was that we did, right? Whether you were a teacher or you were in healthcare before, or you were an athlete before, whatever it was, as a kid, you were brought up, you have unique experiences. How do you bring those to life and those skills into what you do? And I love what you're sharing now. And I'd love to tackle this one because I hear it all the time. One, people don't either know how to, or they don't believe they should have a personal brand. And this comes up quite a bit, like especially on LinkedIn or you go to Instagram or places, Right. people just aimlessly post, right? They're just like, I'm just posting out there. Why, why should somebody today, Jay, why, why, sh- why does personal brand even matter? People are buying you, not the product. People are wanting to get to know you. People are buying it based on how they feel about you. You know, not based on just like, oh, because I want that. How many realtors are there in Miami? How many coaches there are in the world? How many entrepreneurs there are? How many podcast hosts there are? Like, yes, you want to be able to fulfill their their problem, like with the solution. But at the end of the day, man, like the amount of business I've done with people because I like them. I like, you know, Brian, I like you, man. I'm here. I don't want to work with someone I don't like, you know, Brian and I might be doing some business together. Right, Brian, if you didn't like me, there's no way you're gonna like, hey man, I wanna look at building my brand, getting a blue tick, doing some stuff together, right? Yeah. It, it, you know, t- take it back to like the old, old, just like on the inside feeling. Man, you're making decisions based on people. So building a personal brand is crucial because once people know you, once people like you and listen, they trust you. Once you trust someone, you can take them anywhere you want to take them, right? And I think the biggest problem in the marketplace today, it isn't talent, it isn't your website, it isn't your sales script, it isn't your look, it's trust. How can you get people to trust you? And the way to get people to trust you is to build to connect with them. And the way to connect with them is create content, build a personal brand, hmm. you know? People, Brian, people now are wanting to know what Jeff Bezos eats for lunch. It's like the third or fourth search. So why do we care? I don't, but I get it. Because in our mind, why do we care about Amazon stocks? No, it's not Amazon stocks. Hey, what is Jeff Bezos doing today? Yeah. I'm, I'm just buying, I'm just buying it like, I'm just buying like a, like a, a Apple pair of headphones on Amazon. Why do I care? Because we do. We want to know the, the guy behind the product now. Yeah. Man, you know, and, and we've seen that continually. I, I think it's speeding up at such a rate that we talk about this in, in the mortgage space or real estate coaching space. People have already Googled you, right? They've already looked you up. And your point, how you show up online matters. And I think if we leave it right. to chance or we leave it to, oh, I'm going to have this beautiful website and they're going to love my bio. Yeah, there's no connection in your bio, right? Like, right. there's no Clean right, um, dude. We, so, we sit, we we sit half the time, you know. And I'm and I'm culprit culprit of it. We all do it. We we get caught up in the things that actually aren't moving the needle forward, right? Well, if I spend another three grand on this logo, dude, you should be spending to get in front of people. You should be spending that three grand to go to a conference to get in front of people. Now, look, you want to be good, but assuming that everyone's listening here is a pro, and that you know you know your thing better than the next person. Great. How do you get people to trust you? And that's why personal branding is awesome because it's free. It doesn't cost you anything much, any money to create a video, you know? So that's why I'm a big believer of it. And I always use stories. Like think of everyone that you know, look at the people that you value the most. They're probably doing a personal brand. They're probably out there. They're putting themselves out there. You connect with them. Yeah. So think about even last week. And for for those that are listening, if you're either – going to a conference or you're thinking about going to one, I will tell you right at the gate, number one, the energy was electric. It was incredible to be back in front of people again and actually having like face-to-face interaction and conversation. But secondly, how many people, Jay, when I came in, I haven't met them in person, right? Like we're part of some small groups on Facebook and we've connected. Right. I mean, I felt like I I was, I knew them. Like I've, I've been out with their kids at their sports games. I've, I've eaten with them at restaurants when they post their favorite restaurant. You, you just, the intersection is there. So I would yeah. love to pick your brain on this because 
what type of content do you see as people start to go down this lane? What type of content should they be thinking about? Because, you know, some people post their food. Some people are out with sports. Like what, what's that secret sauce or magic sauce um, and formula that people should be thinking about as they start to put themselves out there? Yeah, look, here are the three staples, right, that you need. That is, this hasn't died, right? So if you're taking notes, these are the three things you want to be constantly thinking about with your social content. And I've seen this work for people of A grade level and people who are just getting started and it hasn't proved anyone wrong. So it's like the gym, right? You have your staples in the gym, you know, yeah. your squats, your deadlifts, you know, maybe running on the treadmill, right? But there are these three things. If you do, you'll be probably okay. First one is education, educational content. Do you want to be seen as the expert in the space or the leading expert in someone else's mind? So for example, Brian, give me an industry. Let's go real estate. Easy one. Okay, let's go real estate. Easy. All right, cool. Me too. Real estate. Great. So you want to be posting content that educates the market about real estate. The way to do that is write out 10 FAQ questions that you got asked all the time, all the time with real estate. Example, when's the best time to buy? Should I rent or should I buy? Where's the best place to live? Should I buy a duplex or should I get a, like, a multifamily house? You know? Yeah. So now you've got four pieces of content right there. I, and I'm not even real estate. So you want to write out all those questions that you get asked a lot. And that's your content. You want to be the, you want to be seen as the expert in your space. So when you post stuff, people go, wow, this person knows what they're talking about. So when they're sitting, having that barbecue and their cousin says, Hey, I need to find someone to sell my house. Who do you think of straight away? Oh, that guy I see him on Instagram because he's showing up every day. Okay. So that's, that's huge. Second thing you want to do is you want to have now the personal element to you. No one wants the cookie cutter, like perfect real estate guy. This is where yeah. you need to infuse your personality and relate to and connect to the people and how you do that, right? This doesn't mean you just post pictures of your food, right? Now you want to have pictures of your life, but you want to have a caption that brings people in, that draws people in. For example, when you reveal people draw, get drawn in, right? So you can have a photo of you. Maybe it was, here's a perfect example. We work with people in the weight loss space, a before and after photo. That's powerful stuff. This yeah. is where I'm at now, but this is where I was before, right? Maybe in real estate, I lost, you know, maybe it's a photo of you like looking terrible, like really, really bad. And it could be like, this photo was taken straight after I lost a hundred grand in a deal. Oh, wow, he's sharing. This is what people do. They lean in, you know, mm -hmm. they start looking on their phone right? You do not need to reveal the skeletons. You don't need to go to the worst. That's, that's not the whole point, but reveal enough that people go, wow, thank you for, thank you for like revealing a little bit. Even if it's a photo of you and your wife, you can be like, Hey, the happiest day of my life. But let me tell you another day that wasn't very happy when I did this, this, and this, but you want to always make it a little bit about the industry that you're in too. You know, you want to make it relatable because you want to be seen as, as the expert. I'm coming back to that expert that, that you know what you're talking about. Third thing, which is really important is third party validation. You want people to be seen. You want other people to tell you how amazing you are. So testimonials, right? Now you may be thinking, well, Jay, I don't, I, I can't get a video testimonial. It's okay. Why don't you get a screenshot from a text message that someone's like, Hey, Jay, that piece of advice you gave me was awesome. Take a screenshot, get rid of their name, right? Upload that to your, to your stories or your feed. Dude, people will be like, this is great. Constant. It's this. Yeah. Every day, every day, every day, every day. Like people can't fault you. You know, if people come to my, my Instagram, they're like, listen, like I don't, I think he's getting people a result. I've never had anyone say, I don't trust you. Right. That's see, that's, that's my job. It's more like, Am I the right time for you a lot of the times, right? Yeah. So yeah. those three things, education content, personal brand content, revealing, and then some kind of testimonial. Get other people to say how amazing you are. That's your staples. Boom. I mean, that's literally, for anyone out there listening, and you're taking notes, when you start to think about this, we, we oftentimes complicate it, right? And I've been in that seat. I was there. I mean, Jay, when I started and I was posting and trying to figure things out, it was like, what do I post? What up? And you just start posting randomly. And to your point earlier, like you have people that will tell you, Oh, you've got to post like 10 times a day. Just keep flooding the market with content. And I love yours is very laser focused. It's very intentional. And I think that for everybody, 
Like we want to be who we are. And I think that's where we need to lean in because to your point, if somebody's posting something, especially for me, and I can connect up with you, if you're at a soccer game or a football game or you're wherever it is, but you can also add some right. value, I can connect. I'm going, cool. I like you. Right, right. I'm, I'm going to engage on other levels. Yeah, so what, yeah, yeah. They, they want to connect with you, man. That's really important. People want to connect with you and don't make it hard for them to do that. Yes. So I'm going to flip it because you probably see some of the, uh, and, and we love blooper reels. So I'm kind of going to like the bloopers. What have you right. seen? Like just, just that common mistake or error that people make, right? And they, and they think this is the way to get the attention or to grow their, their tribe. What are people trying out there that, that you're just saying, hey, guys, don't do that? Stop do jumping that. around and stop jumping around and doing TikTok videos all day. <laughs> really? So stop, are you, stop dancing around for nine hours a day trying to make the perfect like din, 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 din. Use it, right? But so many people are jumping away from what the work they really have to do. Mm. And a lot of people get caught up Right. And especially now because people like, well, I, I do reels all day and I got all these views and that converted to $10,000 a month. Okay, great. But let's figure out all the other things that she did as well. And maybe there's always people that just get not, I don't like using the word lucky, but like there's something that tr like holds for them, whatever the reason is, but people are spending too long on social doing things that it's, it's, it's a waste. What? Well, let's go back to why you're doing this. Yeah. Are you going to do this because you want to get famous? Okay. Well, maybe that will help you. Most people are not on social media to get famous. Most people are on social media to get clients, to get cash flow. Yeah. Yeah. And what a difference in distinction that is. So I know one thing that we've deployed, and I'd love to hear your thoughts on this, is as we were starting to build our following, we still do this today, is I'll pick a top 25 list and I'll intentionally engage on their content. I'll, I'll leave longer comments than just great post, right. you know, and it's actually very thoughtful. I try to actually watch it and listen. And what did I get out of it that I could give as feedback and kind of a gift back? What would you say to people about is they're starting to grow that following, right? And, and we all know out there sometimes like it or not, but people look at your social profile, they judge it on several different metrics. And one of those is like, they do. do you have anybody following you? Do people engage yeah. in your content? Yeah. Where, where do you lean in there? What's your strategy or, or thoughts about how to start building that that loyalty and, and, and followers that will engage with you. Yeah. Well, the first thing you will have to understand is one post or one week isn't going to cut it. A lot of people, well, I did, I, I posted today and didn't work. Dude, if you're fat and you go to the gym and you want run one time and complain that you're still fat, people would laugh at you. Yeah. Like, why is it the same thing with social media? So it's like reframing that it's going to take time. When I built 57 million views on YouTube, all organically, no advertising, no nothing. It took me seven years, two videos to three videos a week. Wow. Right? To, and it took 2009, thir 2013 was like when it started to like jump a little bit. So I think the first thing you people have to understand is like, hey, stop trying to like, you just did it once and it didn't work for me. Like do, do, do 30 lives, one live a day every morning for 30 days. Let's see what happens. Just do that. Just do that. Yeah. So I think the first thing people need to understand is like be consistent with the messaging and the content, right? And also something that you can handle as well. A lot of people are probably listening right now are probably, you know, CEOs, boss babes, you know, they're lawyers, doctors. They don't have the time, right? I get it. That's why you hire people like us to help you. But that's no excuse. If you can have your coffee in the morning, you can make a video. Yeah. So the question it comes down to now is not if you can, it's that you're scared. See how we're digging, digging the objection. We're finding out what the core is because don't give me the time excuse. Dude, yeah. how long did it, if, if, if you can do that, you know, if you've got time to like, you know, if Donald Trump can make time, if Barack Obama can make time for videos, you can. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Dude, I love that though. I mean, that, and that's the reality, you know, those are just the excuses and I love in any sales training, which I know you've been through and I've been through several years of that. And that first objection, even when we tell ourselves it is typically some type of smoke screen or something just like, man, we're just putting, right. it, putting it out there. And as you start to dig deeper and think about that, as you're connecting with people, what I love is social gives you an ability, which, you know, one of our, 
our listeners over here, Bill shared, you know, it's your reputation. It's how people are going to connect with you. And I've always thought of it as almost like you're, you're building a house in a way. And that foundational content that you're putting out allows people to really connect with you when you're not connecting with them over a phone call, right? Like it's not one to one and social's given us that. Where have you seen it? You know, Jay, cause you do a great job of this. You, you seem to be, you, right, you talked about YouTube and, and 50 plus million views and all this and people there. And then you're on Instagram, a million and you know, followers there. Right. How do you, how do you think about it for you getting your message out on these different platforms? Cause I think a lot of times people ask me like, where do I go? How do I distribute it? Do you have a, a thought process or strategy around that? Yeah. Coming back to, coming back to like getting them clear on what they want first, you know, because what you want can depict on the, the content and the style that you go for, you know? So assuming that most people want clients and cash flow, I would say, okay, choose the platform that's probably going to have most of your clients. Usually it's Instagram, right? Facebook isn't dead. It's just a different, depending on what you're trying to do. LinkedIn is still good as well, right? So let's get clear on what we want from doing this. What's the outcome? Second thing is, okay, what platform, right? And then third thing is, okay, how can we consistently be doing content that's not going to kill us and that we can still continually do and give it some time, but leverage the content as not only value, like that you can send to people, hey, check this video out, I send it on my Instagram. But it's also your visual business card. Mm. Gone are the days where people just take business card and go, ah, I trust the guy, ah, I like the guy. Dude, people are gonna be Googling you late at night, maybe before the contract gets signed, you know? Hang on, yeah. give me a second, I'm just gonna, and if they don't, if, they're, if, you're, if you're a ghost online, dude, it's, it's, it's harder. Like why make it harder for you right now? I'm not asking you to be me. Like that's the one thing I tell people, you're not trying to be me, but where you're at, you know, you can do more. Yeah. And they're like, you're right. Yeah. Because I'm like, don't you want, how would you like it if you could walk into any room and people have instant trust with you? You don't have to explain yourself. Like, oh, that sounds pretty exciting. Yeah. Yeah. Because we all know what it's like to have to go and convince someone to work with us. You know, so I just want to take away all those barriers. So there's never yeah. a trust issue. It's just, there's, you know, we're in a different problem, but it's like, I don't want the things that I can control to hinder the, the deal or hinder the connection or hinder the relationship. Yeah, I love it. And you mentioned something as I listen, and, and, and I gathered this very quickly when we met last week, is right. you, have a, you have a confidence about you. It's not an arrogance. And I think a lot of people are striving for that balance of how do they gain confidence? So, so back through Jay's, I mean, you, you were a magician for 15 years, right? And you're traveling like right. 30 countries. And you're, you're, you're on right. stage. Yeah. Were there ever times that, you know, like you kind of felt like, hey, do I have it? You know, and how did you build your confidence? Because I think that's a muscle that a lot of people are trying to figure out in whatever field they're in. Like, how do they gain a little bit more confidence? Yeah, confidence comes from experience. You know, Brian, how did you get confident at speaking on, the, on this show? You, you, you did it, you know. Like everyone in life is confident in elements of their life, right? Mm -hmm. So the way I got better at speaking or selling is I, I'm pretty, I, w I was, you know, I didn't tell you the story, but I was a soccer player. I really wanted to play pro soccer. And the way that we got trained back 15 years ago, right? Said no, 17 years ago, is they were really hard on us. Like it was old school, like you're doing it, do it again. Like there's no fun. It's like the army, the Navy, do a hundred pushups. Yeah. Th that's it. Like you, you there's no, uh, so for me, when I was so disciplined in like, like that, all you have is to get your confidence up. You, there's no other, there's no other way. Like you better figure it out. And I, but I think there is, I think people are always looking for this. Oh, well, if you do this, that will get your confidence up. I always yeah. try to bring it back to stories or that you can relate. Look at something in your life that you're really good at. Everyone right now, think of something that if I asked you, to wake up half asleep, you could go and do it. Okay, what is that, right? Okay, great, how did you get good at that? And then ask a man, how did you really get good at that? And eventually they'll be like, I did it over and over and over and over again. Yeah, yeah, I, I can relate to that because the soccer piece, and I love what you said, and, and we talk about that in sales with our team, is the person that puts the most reps in with the best quality, yeah. right? So once you learn and you're acquiring skills, which I'm a big believer of, Every day, 
we, we chop wood, right? And carry water. Right. Like we, we're, we're learning, we're training every day. You know, right. we don't train right. once a month and all that, you know, there's some beliefs we have here. And over time, you're right, you get better. But what's interesting, and, and you know, Jay, a lot of people, when, when we started the podcast, they're like, why are you doing a podcast? You do mortgages. You're like, you know, VP and all this stuff. I said, well, I speak in front of our team. I uh, do presentations in front of real estate offices. Right. I need to get better at public speaking. I need to get right. better at acting. I love to hear stories. Right. And what's another way to add value? Because let's, let's be real. Do people really want to hear about mortgage products and programs? No. No. They're not sexy at all. No, uh, no, of course. So as I started thinking about some things that we were looking at, I'd love, I love what your experience has been because, you know, people that sell, you know, our product in some ways can be very commoditized, right? Like you can get a mortgage, you can go online today and you can find it. Right. So in, in the mortgage space, as you look at it, how would loan officers, which is a large part of our audience, how do they start to differentiate themselves if they start to do some of the things that we talked about, right? We've already given them kind of the pillars of content, what to post. Are there things right. that you look for or you'd say, here's how you start to differentiate yourself in the marketplace as you start to engage in this? Yeah, we in, P, in PR with our PR agency, most of our, 90% of our time is finding the hook for a client. See, the difference between our PR agency and 95% of others is we don't pay to pitch, we guarantee the service. So we know what's going to happen, which is like beats everyone in this space. That was so in a way to answer question. That was my hook. What are you doing yeah. different? Who? Are you, why are you different? Because we guarantee the service. What do you mean? I can get you in that guaranteed in three months. Oh, all your money back. Oh, let me just take out the, you know, is that in contract? Yeah. Who are you? Let me trust you. I don't know who this guy. Oh, okay. You have good. So what I just shared, real life example, what is the hook for you? So it could be a little hook. It could be like, maybe you're the pocket square guy. Maybe you're like the loan officer that wears extravagant pocket squares. Okay. The hook can change. But like, why are people thinking of you? Ah, that guy is always like doing that, you know? Whether it's annoying or not, that's not about that. It's like, it's capturing their attention. So yeah. maybe you're the funny guy. Maybe you're the guy that's like, you, you, you wake up people with motivation every day. But like, look at every loan officer in your space. Firstly, look at all of them and, and as an observer and go, okay, out of all these people, who do I like and who do I remember? Okay, I like this guy. Why do I like this guy? See who you're analyzing, what you're analyzing the situation. And then you're going to go, okay, why do I remember this guy? What does he do? Oh, he shows up every day. Oh, he has that. He sings. He's the sing guy. But see how you're remembering this guy. You don't remember the guy that emailed you once. His name's Tom. And he wears a blue patterned shirt. Oh, yeah, whatever, man. But I know that guy. So what is that unique thing about you that people can be like, makes you a little bit different? And once again, just to bring up that, I, know I already can feel the listener's fear. I'm not like you. I know. I get it. Okay. So what about, what, what, what about you? What do you got going on that make, can make you a bit different? Man, I love that. And that almost... It's full circle with the testimonials. You know, as we started to go out, and I would encourage you, my listening, we went out and we actually, in a way, solicited some testimonials of, hey, if you liked working with us, we'd love your feedback and people that are on your team. And we got clarity on what do we do that people like, right? Because yeah, we may think it's one thing, but it, in actuality, they go, yeah, I like I like Jay because of this. Yeah. Um, I think that that's something yeah. to... And, and here's a good and here's a good move if you give, anyone's getting testimonials, right? Have a framework. Tell the people what you want them to tell you, and, and let me give some understanding of that. Don't just say "create testimonial" for me. They, they don't know what to say, yeah. right? Frame it up so you can say, "Hey, well, you, this is what you want. You want my name is this is the role I play at. We recently worked with Brian and the team, right? Okay, he got us the result. But this is where there's extra comes things come in. He got us the result. We did this, this, and this. His numbers, but he was also professional, reliable, trustworthy. He really cared. That is what people want to hear. Because yes, the result is important. But there's a lot of people that can get you a result. I'm sure. But what are the are those final things? He shows up. He took my call. Very easy going. There are these key words when it comes to testimonials that I've used for 15 years, 
when I was a magician. It was all the character-driven stuff. Professional, reliable, shows up, easy to work with, right? Attentive. And then people go, because other people are saying it about you. Then they go, oh, well, okay, that sounds good to me. Let me, let me check this guy out, you know? Yeah. And I think it's some of the things that we just overlook. And you just nailed some big ones there where very oftentimes that consistency showing up, being the person that you are over time starts to build that credibility. And you know, I've often found in, in people's lives, like there's lessons that have learned. And I'm curious for you, you know, Jay, like who are you really kind of absorbing or guiding you? Anybody today that you feel like, man, this is somebody people should follow or you're, you're getting personal development um, just as you're growing your career too. Look, you know, I like Grant. I like the, the Cardone, you know what I mean? Yeah. I like, I like what he's about. You know, a lot of people don't, some people don't really like him, but I see the heart, you know, I see the willingness to just keep going, right. Yep. And volume and, and 10 X your thinking, you know, when, when, when I heard about that concept and I implemented it, it even for someone like me who thinks big, I'm like, I'm thinking too small. Mm. Like, why am I thinking in Miami? Why don't I think globally? And then your mind goes, that's so possible. Right. Yeah. So Grant, you know, has been a, a big help. Coach, Coach Bert is good. You know what I mean? Very just, just disciplined. Just, yes. just like, boom, like, just boom. I like that because I feel like, and once again, there's so much noise and there's so many people saying, you can't do this, you can't do that, you can't do this. But there's a strategy to, to get to where you want to get to. And like the one, I think one of the biggest mistakes I had and I did in my life was I didn't have a coach for a long time. I thought I could do it all myself. And it's like, I have this story. It's like, you're in the jungle all alone. You're trying to get out. And there are three ways to get out. One, do it yourself. Use two, use someone else's map or three, have a tour guide who knows the bear who's, who's been there has done it. And I like, now it's like, if I'm feeling like I'm hitting a wall, I don't try and like stress to figure out, I'm like, okay, I don't know. Hands up who can help me. And usually the more money I pay, <laughs> the, be the better I get. Like I always go like, okay, what is the market? Okay. I want to give, who can I give more to? And usually you can go to a conference and then meet and like get double wins. So that's just a little side thing, but, but yeah, man, like Grant, Mike, you know, I do like what Grant has said, be careful of having too many mentors or coaches because it's conflicting, you know, yeah. On, like, you know, Roger Federer doesn't have 15 tennis coaches. He doesn't have three. He's got one. Mm -hmm. So it's like, yeah. okay. I love that because that's where a lot of people are today. And, and I'm in the camp of, I think everybody needs a great coach. You know, I came up in the sports right. world and w without a great coach, there's no way you get to the next level and improve at the rate that people do. And even today, I was thinking about yesterday, Jay, I was telling the story this morning, I got done with a great workout and at our gym, there's coaches there and there's people working out. So the environment's great. Music's great and all that. But something really stood out to me at the end. And I wonder if you have anybody in your life like this, people that are listening. I got done with the workout. There's like five minutes left in the time cap and all that. And one of the coaches comes over, taps me on the shoulder. He goes, hey, great job. Um, you've just earned yourself a thousand meters on the row. I want you to get on the rower right now. And immediately said, we're going to do this, this, and this. I didn't even have time to think about it. Like literally, Jay, it's like, we just go do it. So who in your life are you allowing, like you said, that can coach you, that can get you to think bigger? 10x your life, all those things. And it was a moment for me where I'm like, man, that's what I'm paying for to go to the gym, not the equipment, not the workouts. You're paying for that person to push you beyond what you would have done by yourself. Right. Yeah. And it's the same in business, right? It's those things that human nature, we're only going to go so far, even into the personal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Personal. You need somebody to push you outside. So dude, I know we can jam. Say, you know, well, yeah. you know, I was going to say, you know, I've spent, I, I don't think it's there yet. I think I'm close to six figures in coaching PD for the last year. And let me just tell you, 2020, I was 40 grand in debt, right? I lost all my contracts, all my cash flow. I was building my speaking career in America, right? And then I was like, you know what? I've got to go all in with this, you know? Yeah. And now our agency is going to hit seven figures. I know it is, you know, in, 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 in what is it now since January? You know, but it's like, and that's not to show off, be cool or anything like that. I'm just trying to say like, but I spend so much money in personal development. Like I need to be around winners. I need to have someone on my team. 
Like, yep. okay. And, and I think if anyone's listening right now, so many people go into situations, they go, I spent five grand and it didn't work for me. That's, I'm never doing it again. Dude, that's such a limiting mindset, right? Maybe you went into that situation and you learned that, okay, maybe I shouldn't have, maybe I've got to be a bit more clever on who I choose. Or you know what? I took one thing from him, one thing from him, one thing from her, you know? And maybe that thing will be used later. Maybe it's just like, it's this information that's sitting here, but you, you, you heard it, but you don't use it yet. And then two years down the track, you're sitting on a Thursday afternoon having an issue with a call and you go, that, there it is, you know? So if I can just share with everyone right now, like, you know, you, you got to invest in you. See, the bit coming back to the personal brand. Mm-hmm. Stop trying to make it all in crypto. Put it in you first, man. You know, who's the best investment, man? You are. You will, yeah. you can't lose. Crypto can lose, you know? Yeah. Real estate can lose. <laughs> you can't lose unless you die. Yeah. And even then, I would argue, like, you know, we've got three kids and the person I'm becoming, one of my big whys is the more I can push myself outside of that comfort zone and become right. a better dad, a better leader, you know, better husband, all that stuff. Well, guess what? That's the legacy I get to pass on to my kids who then get to carry that. And that is yeah, for all of us. That's, I don't, I don't think it does die when, when we die. And so that's the part I love what you said, Jay. And for anybody listening, man, that is like, that's it. The, the investment you make in yourself, it's about who you're becoming. And I remember a mentor of mine four years ago, it's kind of one of those breakthrough seasons for me. And to your point, I had to charge it on a credit card. I didn't have the money Okay. and I'll, I'll never regret it. And um, I won't yeah. say how much it was, but it was more than I was like, oh, is this going to work? Right. You know, it's one of those you're like, okay. And, and there's probably other things I should have invested in, but I look back and it was the absolute right investment because from there, season after season after season, years later, I can go back to that moment and that experience and I'm pulling lessons and I know who I am much more clearly now. And that's, look, right. that's the journey we're all on, Right. Yeah, but yeah, like, you yeah. know, it's, it's just giving people like people listening right now. It's just like, we're, we're not coming from a place of ego, we're coming from a place of truth, you yeah. know? And I know what it feels like. Ah, it's not for me. I don't want to invest in that. It's like, okay. You know? Yeah. I got sick and tired of being sick and tired of, you know, like, yeah, man, I was, yeah, I'm tired. I'm, I couldn't keep doing it myself like this. I mean, this isn't working and then insanity doing the same thing over and like, I got to change something. Yeah. And like, dude, it's funny. You know, it's funny when you see something working, like double down on that. Yeah. Like I'm every month, every minimum within eight weeks, I'm at some kind of event, minimum, like event that I paid, that I paid for. It's not free. Like I'm like, okay, keep, just like, you know, that's that, that abundance mindset is also yeah. a skill that people need to learn too. Yeah. Well, I only yeah. make a hundred grand. Why don't we try and make 500? I love coming into situations like that, man, and just sort of breaking people's bubble. And it's yeah. like, it's like the whole thing. Who said you're an introvert? Okay, you're only making this. How can we make this? Yeah. Oh, you're, you're right. I could make that. So. Dude, I love it. Well, I know I know we could jam for a yeah, while. Yeah, we could jam. Dude, yeah. This, this has been great. So how do people follow you? Where can they connect up with you the best? Because I know you're on IG, but where can they follow along and connect up with you? Right, right. So anyone on Instagram, go on Instagram at JJ Live, and then we can put that in the, the chat box at J A Y J A Y L I V E. Or if you're old school, you want to like me, hey, you, you don't know who this guy is, got a lot of energy, could, you know, I'm not sure of this Miami look. I don't know if I trust the guy. I get it. I would feel the same. Ace of Spades Agency dot com. Ace of Spades Agency dot com. Send me an email, give me a call. And, and you know, for the people that, have resonated with something I've said and they go, you know what? You're right, Jay. I need to do something with my business because it's not working and I'm hitting a wall. You need to spend money in promotion and marketing. It's like organic growth will keep you at that same level. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's just really important. So if you want me in your corner, uh, I'm I'm here for you. Yeah, I love it. We'll put it in the show notes. And then as we share everything out, guys, make sure that you connect up. If nothing else, just to follow along and see what Jay is building and where he's going. I love finding guys like this that you can bring into your camp that have expertise in areas that quite honestly, I don't have, but I know is going to be a resource for me and my team and people around us. And look, I'm a firm believer who you surround yourself with makes a huge impact. 
on who you are and how you show up and how you're able yeah. to serve your customers. So uh, we'll make sure that we get all your info out. This has been awesome. I'm excited. Dude, this is um, one of those that I'm going to go back and re-listen to because there were a few things in there as you were saying, um, I'm listening and I'm going, okay, I can't wait to go back and take my own notes and, and, and re-listen. So thank you for your yeah. time. Dude, thank, thank you, for, man. Thank you for how you show up. Last week was, was a great opportunity and this is why I'm going to close with this is guys, you got to show up out there and you got to show up to these events. Put yourself in the game. Nobody else is going to sub you in and you've got to get out there and put yourself out. And as you do that, I believe this is a belief I've shared. We're one person, one connection, maybe one phone call away from that success or that dream we've always had. You just got to put yourself in the game. So make sure you do that today. Take something yeah. from the show and go implement it. And let us know how we can help you. If this has been of impact, always leave a review, leave us comments, and we appreciate you guys for listening in. Jay, thank you, my friend. Thank you, guys. Take action. Yep. Catch you on the next one. Subscribe, rate, and review The Brian Covey Show today. Go to briancovey.com.